ado, let me introduce you to our panelists. You guys gotta pick an order. All right, fantastic. Uh, you know her as Josie Saltzman, and we know her as Kaylee Bryant. And the newest vampire in the world of the Vampire Diaries, Lizzie Saltzman, will bring in Jenny Boyd. <laughs> the writer of one of my favorite episodes in all of season one of Legacies and probably all of Legacies history, and also the original Elizabeth, Marguerite McIntyre. And that episode is Mommy Dearest, to answer your question. I know it was burning, all of us. One of my best friends in the whole world and the newest alpha of the Salvatore School Pack, Ben Shreo, Courtney Bandico. <laughs> and last but most certainly not least, the legacy of legacies, Danielle Rose Russell. That's what happens when you put all the Legacies ladies in a room. <laughs> <laughs> so much moisture. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Danielle, for helping my jokes land really well. You okay. said it, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I'm gonna start by asking you guys a couple fun questions while we gear up our audience to ask more questions. This one's an easy one for the ladies of our show, and I have a special one for you. Uh, it has been, what, two, three years? Does anybody want to feel like the world is moving too fast since we left Legacies? Starting with Danielle, moving down the line, hit me with where do you imagine three years from where we last saw your character, yeah. they might be? I think she might have gone to school somewhere and did the, I don't know, one school to the next. Oh, Michelson goes to class? She goes to college. Oh, I know, does she? Now what, she does. What is she studying? Um, probably like English or something. Art. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Um, so, well, she would have graduated high school by now. So what would hope. Right, one would hope. Well, she wasn't in class very much, so maybe she got held back. But I would think that she's also definitely in college, maybe studying linguistics, you know? You know, she had the deaf <laughs> Well, um, I think that Lizzie moved to Paris, um, and I also pitched my spinoff at the last one of these cons that she becomes a supernatural detective. Okay, well, you did pitch a spinoff to me. Okay. Well, now you know. Thank you. Um, yeah, I like to think of her living a very fashionable, kick-ass yeah, life that. in Paris. Law school, baby. Law school. Law school. Okay. What's that being pitched down the law school track? Um, family law. Okay, you I know, get that. Because of her background. Very cool. All that emancipated minor stuff. Right. You like know, a sort of advocate. social social work angle. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Nice. Public servant kind of thing. Eventually, a professor at the Salvatore School. Well, Jenny just stole my question from Marguerite, which was. Give us your three years later legacy spinoff. I want to write on more. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I just realized looking at you the first time I met you, when you kind of go, it was like Kevin Williams in his house, and you walked up to me and went, Hi, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, What? what? <laughs> and I was like, Well, I did good. Look at this. Uh, uh, I was uh, but I would watch the out of that show uh, with fashion and all the mystery and all the stuff like I would really watch that so oh, good idea She's like an Emily in Paris. I was just gonna say it's the but Emily like, in Paris. Film noir <laughs> influences yeah yes incredible so funny. I don't remember that but I very well could have I had a few drinks with that 
Amazing. All right. This one is going to be a little legacy ladies theme since that's where where we are. I feel like uh, this is actually very specifically for Haley, Jenny, and Marguerite. I'd like to talk about, as I mentioned, you, you wrote Mommy Dearest, which I think is one of the most stunning and incredible Saltzman sister episodes that exists. Um, and also uh, A Mummy on Main Street, which is also a really good character dynamic episode between the three girls. Um, can you talk to us about season one and like the incarnation of that, the relationship between those three girls and like how important it was to explore that? Well, it was obviously Julie and then Brett Matthews who they were co-show running. Um, and I was lucky enough to get asked to jump on to season one and I was really excited. And I would just say, I, A, I love women stories, yeah. hearing women stories yeah. and seeing strong women embody these stories. And I think a lot of it started to coalesce as we got to know these really wonderful actresses and what everybody brought. So it, got, it just got clearer to all of us, I think. Um, and as far as, I just think there's so much beautiful story to be told about how sisters interact with each other, how women, how young women are trying to find their way and all this, so I, I think that transcends all genres. So I think we all did that. And then we just sort of, I was just having a conversation where when we were doing Mommy Dearest, um, my father had just passed literally a week before and I had to fly to Atlanta to actually um, produce the episode with the really wonderful director, Jeff Schatz. And it was so moving to me what these guys did with it because they, they really brought so much to it and it was so beautiful. It was hard to be there just in general and to have the kind of beauty of their performances and what everybody brought to it made a hard time sort of more meaningful and more beautiful for me and so I thank you so much for that because that was that was like not not great and it could have been terrible and instead it was wonderful That's so amazing. but again it's lost we all get lost we all get grief and I think you know that's universal and just to show I firmly believe whatever you believe there is a way that people stay with us whether they are here in body or whether they are not, they're with us in some way. And I think that that was really important, and especially in a moment like that. Um, and uh, The Mummy on Main Street, was that was with Sherman Payne, and he was a wonderful writer on that. We co-wrote that. And that was that was a super fun episode, guys. I mean, we were like, this is, this is crazy. I don't even know what to say. I think we just think strong women are great. Strong yeah, sisters yeah. are great. People have conflict. That's cool, and then how do you work it out? Yeah, so that was like if I remember, that was the episode where like Hope and, and Lizzie had their big fight, and Josie admitted to having a crush on Hope, and it was just like the whole dynamic just sort of unbuckled and came back together. And I just thought that was really cool and beautiful. But I wanted to go back really quick to what you're saying about grief because um, I think that's one of the, the foundational elements of the show that I've always found so fascinating, especially in Hope's character. Um, Poor Danielle had to sit with me at dinner the other night while I was like, listen to all the people that died this year. And she's like, oh my God, <laughs> like my, my life is sort of this endless parade of death. And uh, it was why the show spoke to me so early on um, the way that it did. And I, I've always found that episode very moving. Danielle, um, we don't talk too much in Legacies proper, but talk to us here um, about how you personally feel about Haley's impact on Hope. I wish it was I do too. Yeah, quite a lot. Um, the only way I can justify it is that she probably found peace with her mother at the end of the original, on that whole episode with the dream sequence when they reunited. So I think she found peace with her um, more than she did her father. So I think that that's why we didn't really explore it. And yeah, probably she was at peace. It's fine. Absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. Um, and Courtney, <laughs> you look oh, so surprised. You're here, you're on the panel. You play Finch. Oh, wow. And as it turns out, Finch became the alpha of the Salvatore School right at the very end of, of season four. And it was a story that was really exciting and important to me, but also one that I was really bummed we didn't get to keep going on, because um, I would have loved to see Leader Finch. Um, how did that feel to you, like meaning-wise, to get to do that with Finch's story and, and end it there? Wow, well, I mean, I love just 
sort of the theme of leadership and the kind of leader that Fitch wound up being, which is one that isn't like grabby at it, it's really leadership as a servant, um, leadership as um, I'm here to just help, and if it means I take the reins, then I guess that that's what that's what I do. Um, it's nothing. I mean, because I mean, obviously, there's also something. You know what I, you know that that's a thematic in my life as well. Um, you know, leadership sort of being thrust upon me when I don't want it. Um, but it seems like okay, I guess like I know the direction that but I would follow you anyway. Yeah, why would follow you anyway? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> that was um, great. Yeah, and, and that's, I mean, and that's what, what I think the best, or where the best leaders come from as well. So Absolutely. It would have been great. See, that's why I would have been amazing. Well, I will save all the rest of my personal interview questions about legacies for later and start passing it off to some of our fan audience questions. Uh, we're starting down, way down there. Lining up over there. Lining up over there in the back. I'm struggling to see with this light. I'm going to stand for a moment. All right, we're lining up on both sides. Questions up here in the middle. All right. Okay. Hi, my name is Shelly, and my question's for Danielle. So my question is, what character from the Vampire Diaries do you wish that Hope would have met? I'm trying to think who I've met as Danielle versus who Hope met. Separating the two. Um, I guess Elena, that would have been cool, you know? Worlds collide, I guess. I don't really know why they would have met because she, she's a doctor, I think. But yeah, oh yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I would like the shot. Hi, my name is Callie. My question is for Danielle. Um, after she found out, after Hope found out what happened with the Trinity, like Lucian, Tristan, and Aurora, and the compulsion, spending a century as her family, um, how did Hope move forward with that knowledge, and how did it impact her as a Michelson and that legacy, and trying to be a better person? Like when she found out on the originals, or when on, on Legacy? On Legacy, when Aurora came back. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think having done the body swap and everything probably screwed with her a little bit. So she, you know, when she came out of that probably was part of the catalyst for her gaining back her humanity, I'd say. Um, but it was fun for me. <laughs> I was on set the day we filmed the very first moment of that body swap and it was delightful. <laughs> we, were, we were sitting in that terrifying green room the, with the cockroaches, yeah, the cockroaches <laughs> where we got attacked by a mouse sized yeah. cockroach. Yeah. And it was, it was Danielle and Rebecca trying to be like, okay, how do we be each other? And it was just delightful. Yeah, it was fun. I remember that. The, so. the table reads were very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Who's in the Yeah, because it would be Hope as Aurora, Aurora as Hope, Dark yeah. Hope, Hope. Yeah. There's like yeah. six so hopes, hopes in the script. Yeah. yeah. I remember one time I wrote like Dark Hope and it was supposed to be No Humanity Hope and it, it threw everything in an uproar. <laughs> All right, go for it. Hi, um, so my daughter's name is Aurora Hope. The Aurora was a happy accident, but I did choose Hope from the show. So I was just curious for all of you, like if you had to choose one of the names from any of the shows to name a child, what would it be? Also, Kaylee, how do you pronounce your last name? <laughs> you know, Kaylee, I apologize, because I meant to ask you before we got in here, and there was a thing, and be like, Let's do this. Let's introduce you with the name you'd like to be called. So why don't we do it right now? Uh, yeah. Hi. Uh, for those that don't know, my real last name is Kanashiro or Kanashiro. Uh, yeah, thanks. Amazing. Thank you. All right. We'll go back to names. Give us your baby names. I need time to think. This is right. such an epic Courtney, moment. name your baby. Oh, oh this is actually really funny. I'll take this. I always thought Finch was a nickname, because my name was Sorry, you're naming your baby after your own No, 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 no. <laughs> but I, I, I was like, well, I think well, uh, Finch's real name is Rose, and I think that's a part of a middle name. I know someone whose middle name is Rose. Who is it? Oh. <laughs> you might know her too. I thought her full last name. What do you mean your last name isn't Rose Russell? 
obviously Jaden. That's a good one. I also really like Freya. That's the only correct answer, actually, Jenny. Great job. Thank you. I think, funny enough, like I love the name Elizabeth. And you know? Love you, girl. I think Aurora, actually. I really like that name. Yeah, it's beautiful. So it feels like you really cornered the market on Daniel names there. Nailed it. Amazing. No lanes. So Weird. really, I w it would be after Danielle. That's who I would name. It's just the old Jordan. Now I'm insulted. <laughs> <laughs> My only goal. Can't wait to meet Courtney's child, Lane Rose Russell. <laughs> Go ahead. Hi, my name is Gianna. Um, I have a question for Danielle, Keely, and Jenny. How was the process of like filming the panda scene, that whole thing? <laughs> I was actually just thinking about this the other day because they had our stunt people go so freaking high in the sky. <laughs> and I just remember like watching that and I'm thinking how, I mean, the whole night was just surreal from beginning to end. I kept turning around to them and being like, this is, I'll never act again. Like, it's over because I'm really going there. Like, I'm taking it, you guys, and I don't know how it's gonna go. And they were like, everything is fine. So we just, we, we tried to commit, and I think it paid off. Um, we met a lot of pandas today. <laughs> yeah, we did. We got some cute ones given to us as all. Well. But um, yeah, I mostly think about like that stunt. It looked really fun, but also really terrifying. And I'm very glad we did not need to do it. Um, I actually talked about this earlier at the meet and greet for anybody who was there, hi. Um, and I always think of that day as being like one of the most sad days on set because Scotty <laughs> left, Scotty who did my hair throughout the whole show left uh, that day. So he set my hair and I got into the panda suit and I was like, okay, like I can cry once we wrap, but like he's gonna see me in this panda suit and it's gonna be so funny. And I like walked into the trailer like boom, 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 and he wasn't there. So then I cried off my makeup. <laughs> I redid my makeup myself. So if you like my makeup in that episode, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. Sorry for the honesty. <laughs> no, more honestly. Let's keep going. <laughs> when else did you cry? No, I'm kidding. Uh, every episode. <laughs> Josie cries a lot. Thank you. There were a lot of tears on ours. Hello, my name is Alize, and I was wondering what was the most challenging scene to film for you guys? Uh, the Mumby Dance was really like emotionally draining, and, and we did it a lot of times, and I do just remember feeling like an, a level of exhaustion that I hadn't previously felt, because I think we really did, we were all in it, we, we honored it, and we really felt it, so that was what comes to mind. So, yeah. Are all of us gonna answer? I feel like we should all answer that, yeah. Well, I'm not, but you guys can. Oh. Sure. <laughs> um, I think what comes to mind just off the top of my head was, I don't even know the name of the episode, but it was the field day episode where I got in the mud and it was freezing cold outside and it was post getting covered in mud that everybody realized that I was 100% allergic to said mud. Um, so that was pretty brutal. Um, it could have been the day of the bugs in season one. When I had all, I had like, I was like, yeah, I was sweating. And right, there was a different day of the bugs? There's always, there's, there's always a lot. Bugs, yeah. um, but I, what comes to mind is, you know, I lovingly cried over Landon a lot, and there was one day when he was like a pile of ash on the ground in a field, and they, the camera was like down here, and they couldn't fit Aria or even the ash, and so I was just like crying to a tape X on our camera operator's leg, and I was just like, this is really peak professionalism, um, but yeah. <laughs> it's a little humble brag. <laughs> Well, oh, Jeff Hunt came over to me and was like, you gotta cry, man. Like, you gotta cry. Yeah, I, was like, I, mean, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Tell me about Dave. Who are you? Give me an answer. Oh, me? Yeah. Um, well, I, w I can't really think of 
anything that was particularly um, difficult, but I want to say just in general, anything that's at the crack of dawn and very <laughs> cold. Um, yeah. Because my face took to getting like cold high. You know when he was exposed to the that was a that was a makeup, right? Oh, you could have grown a cold, cold in the freezing cold. Yeah. Who did that? Oh. oh no! Yeah, yes, that we did it. We did it at that terrifying mansion as well. Yeah, I didn't do that. No, not you. Oh, the the on the hot Agatha. tub. Yeah, she went. Oh, she yes. swam. Yeah, she swam. She swam. Mm -hmm. She was a trooper. Her name was Bailey. She was a trooper mm -hmm. before my time. <laughs> nope, that was your time. It was season four. I didn't come before your time. Ha ha. Didn't show up. Do you want to answer Thanks. about Vampire Diaries? I. Oh, okay. Here. How to say? Uh, okay, sure. I sure for two days come to mind. One was when I had to shoot Jeremy. Terrifying, horrible, not fair. Still taking the heat on that one. Really sorry, guys. <laughs> I, that wasn't me. Um, and it was awful uh, to actually point a thing and feel a thing. And I was like, this is all horrible. I hate it. And then there was one day. Speaking of being cold and wet, I had to be like sort of deadish. There was an explosion. I kind of don't remember. I just remember Chris Bricker directed it. And I was, there was an explosion and I was at the, in the, in the kitchen of the Mystic Ball Grill, sort of maybe dead. So we had to shoot a lot of maybe dead, cold, wet blood all over me for a long time. And it was really cold, cold day. So it was either a lot with Cher Forbes is it was either really freezing cold or so hot because for the first couple of seasons, the suits were really polyester. And if I stood outside, I was melting and melting. So it's always the physical stuff you remember, like your face is weird, where you got an allergic reaction to stuff. Emotionally, it's not like falling off a log either sometimes, but uh, yeah, for me, it was like when it's really hard physically, you gotta stay focused, it's kind of hard. Hi, my name's Maddie. I was just wondering what all of your guys' Starbucks or coffee order is. <laughs> Mine is the most boring, so I'll go first. Uh, just black coffee. Sorry. I thought you were gonna say matcha latte. Oh. That too. Uh, she introduced me to matcha. That's latte. true. I when she was that. driving home at what two a.m. Yeah. I was, yeah. Sorry. I didn't sleep the rest of the night. <laughs> we have the same Starbucks order. Oh. Yeah. I was gonna say mine's the second, where I just take Earl Grey tea with milk and honey. My bad. I have a dirty chai latte with oat milk. Yes. <laughs> we all have the same Starbucks order. Welcome. <laughs> Mine's 50-50, matcha chai, or uh, the venti Americano in hard time. Amazing. And, and very specific. Yeah, Courtney introduced me to like doing the the fancy version of our, yeah, what do you do? Like grande chai latte. Add one shot of espresso, nine cups, no water, extra hot with oat milk. Nine okay. I'm going to be diabetic. <laughs> nine pumps. Nine. Ten is too much. Eight is not quite enough. Yeah, Courtney's secret is that Finch is the chillest character on Earth, in Earth and Courtney is like bing, 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 all the time. That's not a joke. That's 100% true. Great question. That's amazing. <laughs> Danielle and Kaylee, would you guys prefer playing like the good side of your characters or, or the bad side? Um, at the time, the bad because it was just fun uh, and it was just nice to kind of step out of the regular jokey. But then I look back and I'm like, oh, she was so nice. <laughs> she was just so sweet. <laughs> forget you put a long time ago you said somewhere that you were listening for Josie and Spo to um, Mary Jane by Alanis Morissette and every yeah. time I hear it now I'm like oh Josie yeah <laughs> I listen to a lot of Alanis I forgot about that Alanis thing. that was like further into yeah. that Josie was I, full Alanis I had a question if we didn't have enough fan questions that was going to be like what was everyone's this is my character song because I have my this is when I'm writing this character song um, but I wanted to know 
that was my like deep curiosity, but I won't hog the mic any longer. You'll all have to wait to find out. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Jasmine, and this is for everyone. If you could add or take away anything from any of your character storylines, what would it be? was one pitch that didn't really land with the writers. I, I pitched Lizzie having a Shape of Water style love affair with the fish man. Once again, you did and not they pitch were like, to me. <laughs> <laughs> you were pitching the I wrong writer. I loved that we need to talk. I love your idea. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to France. <laughs> we are shooting a show, and it's going to be in France. It's going to be perfect. Excellent. It's called Guillermo tomorrow. I came up with it. All right, I, I, I mean, I touched on it, but I really wanted to play a teacher at the school. Because uh, there was rumors of a time jump if we went forward, and I really wanted to. Telling our secrets. What? So if you're telling our secrets. I, well, no, I'm kidding. Keep going. <laughs> Please teach. What is she teaching for? Uh, Ooh. The gym? Defense against the dark arts. <laughs> I don't know if we cover that subject. We do not. We do not. HP crossover. All right, I'm in. <laughs> Except it's just all, it's like the, the Star Wars version where we scratch all the serial numbers off so no one knows it's Harry Potter, so J.K. Rowling doesn't get any money. Right? Yeah. I mean, because it's really for X-Men, right? But we're exactly. Exactly. From after school and exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. We got like five more minutes left. Even more. Fifteen. Fifteen. Brilliant. I can't see. I'm blind. Um, it's in my eyeballs and it's not working out for me. Uh, so you guys keep answering and we'll probably be able to get like two or three more. Thank you. Danielle, do you, do you or Kaylee have, have, a, have a thing you did not get to do that you would like to have done? No, I got it all. <laughs> you got it all? I, yeah, I don't know. I got really lucky, yeah. I feel like, with the show. I got to play a vampire heretic for like one scene. That was fun. I feel like the therapy boxes really helped with therapy like, getting like, to do yeah. everything. We got, to, we got to so lucky that we got to do like film noir. We got to do like so many different mm -hmm. like, versions of our world that yeah, I feel like as an actor, it was just kind of like every episode was a new challenge. Yeah. Marguerite, was there a legacy story you really wanted to make happen that did not happen in your time? Honestly, when we in season one, when I heard we were doing Monster of the Week, I was like, oh, how many monsters are there? I don't know. There's not enough monsters. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, there's an endless pool. So I was, I mean, obviously there are. I was an idiot. I was like, <laughs> I was like nervous. And like, and also production, you're like, how do you shoot? Like, that shape of water thing, I bet you it died only because it would be really, really hard to shoot. Yeah. So there's just stuff that's easier to shoot and harder to shoot. So I, I don't think I was, I was only writing on season one, so I don't think I got far enough ahead to be, we, I was just in love with what was happening, so I, you know, I don't think I was thinking that far ahead. I feel like one of our, our, our long-standing, one day this is gonna happen things was the like dark carnival, and we actually finally got it in season four, so that was really exciting. Yeah. All righty, who's up next? Hi, my name is Gabrielle. So if the season had gone on and you got to work with Candace, what is a story or a scene that you would have wanted to have with her? Um, and that's for everyone. Thanks, that's also when I'm dating your daughter. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Like that. Dolphin Forbes. Yeah, yeah. Just exactly that one. Just like right out of moment. Um, I don't know, I wrote so many diary entries of Josie trying to work through where the hell her mom was. <laughs> uh, so I think it would be a very at length conversation of like, why aren't you here for me? <laughs> yeah, same. I think there were some theories like floating around as to why Caroline couldn't have been there. Like there was a really cool idea of some evil curse where everybody fell asleep every time she came back, so we, we didn't know, but she was coming back all the time and trying to visit us. So yeah, something like that would have been really cool. Oh, where did you get that from? Thomas Brandon. Oh, okay, that's Shout out Thomas Brandon. I was like, that's, 
definitely was a Thomas Brand idea or like the coolest Reddit theory ever. I just need to know. Okay, that tracks. Do we honor him? I don't like him. <laughs> I have no idea. No, I think that's good because I mean, Caroline and Kasha are really important to each other. I feel like it'd be interesting to get her perspective. Like, she's one of the few people who like really loved Klaus besides his siblings that's still around. So, like, really get that that information from. Her. I like him. I got you. Probably nearing up on like one to two more questions, depending on time. So just a heads up. Hello, my name's Tyler. Uh, I'm gonna stick with the theme for today Amazing. and ask you which era of Taylor Swift you each are. <laughs> I like 22. It's my favorite song of hers. I mean, it's early days, but I've already been asked this in a panel, and I will stick to my answer, which is as an old, old woman, I fit all the eras. And especially, like, when you think of 89, 89, and you're like, that was a great year for me. And that was literally like the year half of you were born, or probably before you were born. So I, I got them all. I like them all. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to get staked. I don't know Taylor Swift. All right, we'll fix it, don't worry. But we'll then they it. asked me that as a meet and greet, and then I said bad reputation, and they said that it's just reputation. Just reputation. Reputation. <laughs> it's okay, Kaylee. I just learned Taylor this year. We'll fix it. Okay, so. thank you. I, I was gonna say reputation as well, it's like a little more my heart, but I like all the eras. You know? Right. Yeah. I, I know so much about Taylor Swift. You don't know anything. This one, this era, whatever this one is. This is, I think she's just in her embracing all my eras era. Yeah. This one, yeah. that's the one. Yeah. She's yeah. touring the world, she's like, I've won. Mm -hmm. This one, yeah. So, but didn't Beyonce go to her concert? Yeah, she's gonna try to You're not in that era. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a folklore girly myself, like stuff. But I did, when we broke, when we were breaking um, 412, which aired as 416, I listened to Great War like 467 times. <laughs> so that was uh, that's my legacy Taylor Swift song, I guess. Hi, um, my name is Ayana, and I wanted to start off by saying you guys are all beautiful. But then my question is, what is the best piece of advice you guys have gotten in your life? I'm gonna take this with a silly one while you guys think, even though these questions are not for me. I'm just gonna give you some time. Uh, my mom gave me advice that her mom gave her many, many moons ago, and it was, fold your underwear. And it sounds silly, but here's the thing. You fold your underwear, you put it in a drawer, and like every day you go to get ready or like get out of the shower, you get these like cute little neat folded underwear, and you're like, yeah, this is a little moment for me. And it feels special, and I highly recommend it. Celine has folded underwear. Yes, I do. Can I say half a bad word? Yeah. I mean, I don't make the rules, but so I So I was raised by a single ex-military father, and he would say, proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. I thought the bad word was military. Yeah, piss. It was a bad word, right? Right? It's not here, all right. But I like that. Proper, it's the seven Ps. Okay. <laughs> And that's the end of that one. <laughs> I, I've heard, I have one, but I've heard you sunscreen because that is actually a really great advice. <laughs> Don't forget, okay. But for me it was, and this is also physical, drink a ton of water. Just drink so much water. It's so great for you in every possible way. And I've always done it. And when I don't drink water, I am less happy and a little miserable. <laughs> so drink water. Um, it's more of like an inspirational quote. And I think I heard it on Candace Cape's podcast. I was thinking about this recently. She said something like, all the best things that ever happen in life are very unexpected. And I think that's such a nice thing to remember if you're feeling down or things aren't going your way that like it can turn around in a second. Love that. Uh, 
Um, I think uh, something that I've just come to learn over time is to never stop learning and listening. Uh, I think that it is really easy to get into a place where you feel like, I know what's going on. And if you feel like you know what's going on, you probably don't. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I would just say keep learning and listening. I heard one recently um, from a meditation teacher, actually. And she said, all you have to do is breathe. That's all we have to do. And I love that. I repeat that to myself on a daily. Breathe, drink water, fold your underwear. <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. It's so easy. Yeah. You too can be sweating on this stage. <laughs> um, we have five minutes, guys, so I think I can take one more, and we just got to be kind of quick with it. Hi, my name is Delaney. Uh, my question for you guys is, is there anything that you as a person have in common with your character on the show? And also, uh, your hair routines are amazing. They look so good. <laughs> I've answered this before. I would say I'm, I'm also fiercely loyal. Yeah. OK. Yeah. That's fair. I, that. I feel like Sheriff Wolf was confused a lot. Um, <laughs> have that in common with her. And um, I'm on, there's some serious hair black things on this panel. So as a short haired person whose hair is tragic, unless it's literally this short, I'm going to still take that compliment and I'm going to thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> we don't say short haired person, we say short haired queen. Short haired queen. Oh, yeah. 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 Woo. Um, yeah, I would say that I've always really identified with Lizzie, especially for that time in my life. I think Lizzie didn't really know who she was, and I didn't really know who I was in like high school. Um, yeah, and Lizzie's also loyal, so I, I also think that that's similar. Unless you beat up her dad, and then forget it. Um, I would say that similarly to Josie, I love very deeply, and I cry really easily. <laughs> I'd say her resilience is my, yeah, my thing. Okay. Support that. Yeah. Support that a lot. Yeah, thank you. I think we're, uh, we're likely wrapping up here, my friends. Uh, I think we were getting, getting the time about a little while ago. Um, so thank you guys for joining us and for hanging out. Mm -hmm. And thank you to these ladies for chatting with us.